back to Iron Railroad. I hope you can hear me through this gas mask I'm wearing. Today we're going to talk about smoke, trend smoke fluids. Well anyways, I'm going to take my mask off so you can hear me a little better and see me a little better. I don't think that was necessary, but I got your attention now. In model trains, everyone loves to see their, their locomotive smoke. Even some of the diesels now, some of the different gauges, they smoke too. But is it safe or is it poisonous? That all depends. And that's what I'm going to give you the skinny on today on the different types of smoke fluids and, well, ingredients that make up the smoke. Historically, back in the 1930s and 1920s, the trains were running, but there were no smoke. The no smoke units were just plain chucking along. After the late 40s, all the, a lot of the model train companies have started making smoke units. Sure, so what type of smoke units are there? Some of you old, older folks know there were smoke pellets and there were liquid smoke. But that's where we have to get into the skinny of all these ingredients that make up the smoke. Is it safe for you? Is it healthy? Or is it non-toxic? Or is it toxic? Is it poisonous? Would it affect you later on? Well, I'm a pharmacist by trade. I'm a chemist. And I can tell you a little bit about the ingredients. And I think I will enlighten you a little bit more. Back in the early, uh, mid-1940s, post-war, some companies were making smoke pellets. They say, oh, it's safe, it's good for the kids, it's okay. And there, were, there was a warning on the label to say, well, it may cause some skin irritation. But that's not to be the case today. I did some extensive uh, research on the ingredients, and I have a sheet here that was given to me by one of my colleagues. This is uh, dated back in 1966, 1961. And these are concerning smoke pellets. So what are the ingredients in a smoke pellet that makes it so safe as they claimed back then? Well, I could tell you, I could just read it off. Um, these smoke pellets contain, basically, I could read you the names that may not mean anything to you. There's xylene, there's ethylene, ethylene, there's prop propobenzene, trimethylbenzene, ethylbenzene, and there are other stuff in there. So basically, the ingredient is the, the cyclic benzene ring. And benzene was actually outlawed or banned by early 1980s or thereabouts by, uh, on, on a national level. It was deemed to cause cancer. Uh, it could affect you in many other ways. And some of these benzene um, uh, products, they're still around in trace amounts and they talk about you know, how many parts per billion. So, in the water you drink in some places, there may have benzene in it, but it's so, it's so minute, the, the EPA says, oh, it's so many, if it's less than 0 0.00, whatever, point parts per billion, it's safe to drink. Some of the foods that you eat today has benzene in it. Again, some were not benzene as they, when they put it into their product, but they have a preservative, and it's a, if it inter, uh, interacts with another it's a uh, uh, ingredient there, it may turn into a very, very minute part of benzene. So you can't get away from it. Even the farming countries, some of the pesticides, some of the, uh, the feeds, somehow it gets contaminated with benzene. The well water, you don't know if there's benzene there, it should be tested, but you know, again, if it's only so many minute parts per billion, the EPA says it's okay. My point is, we're trying to minimize our intake of benzene. So these smoke fluids, the pellets, not fluids, the pellets, absolutely contains benzene. In my, my opinion, for what my research shows, to confirm what I thought. So you want to minimize that portion of it in terms of the, the locomotives. If you're using pellets, don't use pellets. Use the uh, liquids. Okay, so we use liquids. So what does that mean? Well, not all smoke fluids are created equal either. There are different types of chemicals that make up the smoke fluids. One in particular is propylene glycol. What's propylene glycol? Oh, you must have heard of this point before. It's the stuff they use in um, antifreeze in your car. 
obviously they say don't ingest that, don't drink it because it's poisonous, it's toxic. And yes, it is toxic. But this is in a vapor form, and they, they say, yeah, it's, it's, it should be okay. You're not, you're not you're taking it internally. There is a warning sign that do not take it internally, you know, that, that type of thing. But in my opinion, as a, as a health professional, I say, well, that could be a problem still. So anyway, propylene glycol, I would scratch that off my list, and I'll explain more into the reasons why. So what's the next thing today? What is the biggest thing today? White oil. They say, oh yeah, white oil is good. It's, um, you know, they're using you know, all kinds of formula. They're using baby formulas. For example, baby oil is a white oil, but that's a topical. It applies to the skin. You're not going to drink that. Well, they say, well, there's mineral oil. White oil is mineral oil. They say, well, they sell it in the drugstores. You, they take that as a laxative. You drink it. It's not toxic. Okay. And they say, no. It's not. I always explain why I think it's not okay. My, my professional opinion. So, we go on to the types of white oil, the different grades of white oil. All right, there's, there's a very low grade white oil that's basically, it could be used topically, you wouldn't drink it, but again, again, um, you're gonna stop burning this stuff for, in your locomotive or your diesels. So it became, it go, goes into a different type of uh, modality from liquid into a vapor. So now there are trade sellers out there. They make their own fluids or they buy from someone and they say, yes, we use full grade oil. It's full grade. Okay, full grade is great. Sure, that's better than low grade, you know, um, crude white oil. It's safer. Sure. Again, food, what does food gray mean? Well, you could use it in your kitchen. You could use it in your, in your uh, products that you eat. Again, where does it go? You ingest it, it goes to your stomach. Sure, it's non toxic if you take it that way. But then again, we're not talking about drinking this stuff. We're talking about breathing it. All these become vapors. So what happens? We, in, we burn off, let's say, okay, I'm not gonna use the pellets. I'm not going to use the crude oil. I'm going to use the full grade. But full grade doesn't mean it's good to breathe in. And full grade doesn't mean it's full grade. It's got to be United States Pharmacopeia National Formulary Standardized. In other words, USPNF, which is a pharmaceutical standard in the, in the pharmaceutical industry for all our drugs. And white oil is considered as a drug. So if you put it into the full grade category, it's got to be USP, NF, certified, standardized. Just to say a process, oh, it's full grade. Well, how do we know? It doesn't mean anything. It's got, they have to label it as such as full grade, USP, NF. Then you know it's truly full grade. But if you say full grade, well, it could be a, a lesser grade. You, you don't know. So just to make an awareness of that. So now we're saying... Well, it's full grade, but what, what's the big deal? We're talking about vapors coming up. You're not drinking this, you're not eating this, you're breathing it in. That's why we have a gas mask in certain <laughs> instances. In the military, we use this for, for, for vapors and gas and such. But anyways, let me tell you, mineral oil is an oil. No matter how you, you slice it, it's still an oil. It could be a liquid, you could vaporize it, but when you start breathing it in, it gets into your lungs. It's an oil. It may stay there for a while or it may stay there for a long time. It's just like fire folks, they're firemen, firewomen, fire people, they, they um, get smoke inhalation, that's smoke, right? Yeah, you know, you're breathing smoke on your barbecue. All right, a little bit, of, you know, it'll go away. But if you inhale enough of it, you need treatment. That's why there's small inhalation treatments for the firefighters. Same thing with the, um, the locomotives. You're breathing too much of this stuff, you're gonna need some treatment. And I know a lot of train rooms are in the basement or in the house or in a, a club somewhere, and you may have multiple rails and a lot of people around. Everyone's running all their locomotives at full speed. Great clouds of smoke, it looks great. Some of them smell good. 
you know, they put cedar flavoring in there, or aromas, and, and what, or pine, or whatever, or chocolate even. So, you, you stay hours on end, you keep breathing this in, it's not good for your lungs. And that's my point. If you're gonna run steam, so-called steam, let it be in a well-ventilated room. Have a ventilator, have an air conditioner or something that sucks these smoke out into the outside. To have a ceiling fan is not good enough. That just circulates it around and around and around and it's still in the room. So that's a safety issue. So is it toxic, is it poisonous? Yes and no, depends how you use it and depends what you use. So if you're gonna make your own smoke fluids, I made my own. I use, yes, I do use the white oil. I do use the pharmaceutical gray, uh, full gray, USP, NF certified. And I buy that. It's, it costs a little more money, but it's worth the safety. Now, what else do we have? Well, let me just show you some of the typical bottles that they have here. Hold on a second. Uh, I'll come back to that. Um, just go on my notes here so I can tell you a little more. Well, that, that's what I was saying. In terms of the oil, in the oil stage, the, you know, this stuff rests in your lungs. It will clear eventually, but if you get too much of it, it gets saturated, you're gonna have a breathing problem. Ah, that's the other thing I wanna talk about. You may have multiple people coming in, multiple, uh, health conditions. Most of us are healthy, that's fine, you know, it's really not a problem. I'm healthy, I could tolerate this for quite a while. However, there are people who have respiratory problems, not related to the, the trained hobby, but just because they have um, asthma, for example, or they have all the respiratory distress, but they love their trained hobbies, you have to be cognizant of that for your fellow trained folks. If they have those problems, minimize or shut off your train smoke. And some of the trains you can actually shut off the, uh, uh, the smoke. If you have a locomotive like this one, for example, it doesn't have a shut off, you could attach a, uh, a switch, a little tiny switch, you know, a real small one that has an on-off switch in, right into the, uh, in line with the, the smoke unit. And that would do it too. So be considerate and be cognizant of uh, your fellow train folks. So that's all I have to say today. Uh, not, no more than that. And just be safe. Enjoy the hobby. It looks great. It smells great sometimes. <laughs> so I love my hobby. I'm sure you all do too. But uh, don't worry. The EPA won't come down on you on this right now. At least I, that, that, that I know of. And that's all it is. Thanks for watching.